Hey guys, it's Angelo, and today we'll be taking a look at the raid tests from the last couple of weeks on the PTR of patch 9.1 and the Sanctum of Domination. Patch 9.1 brings a whole new raid along with it, with a diverse set of bosses, but also a couple of things I personally worry about. That being said, the raid looks quite promising for all three priest specs so far, with most of my testing being done as a Shadow Priest, which is what this video will be focusing on. Now as always, if you wish to join a discussion with all things Priest or World of Warcraft related, be sure to join my Discord server with the link in the description box below. Also, don't forget to join me over on Twitch, as I'll be streaming again once the next video is done actually, so of course the link to that is also in the description box down below. Okay. With that being said, and without any further ado, of course, let's go right ahead and have a look. Okay, so first off, I was able to test basically all bosses which were able to get tested so far. Those include the Terror Gru, Eye of the Jailer, the Remnant of Nerzul, Solrend Dormazane, Guardian of the First Ones, Fate Scribe Rokalo, and finally Tel Tuzad. Still remaining to be tested are Painsmith Raznal, the Nine, which are available on LFR actually, and of course Sylvanas Windrunner. In total, most of the bosses I play tested actually look quite good for Shadow Priest, at least with the scaled item level of 226, which all testers had. Whether or not more gear will come into our favor or will become a detriment, that of course remains to be seen but history has often shown that Shadow Priest scales very well with more stats and accordingly with more gear. Okay, let's immediately start us off with the Terror Group. This is the first boss in the Sanctum of Domination, and I have to say from all of the bosses I've seen, this is the most fun by a considerable amount. Before pulling the boss, you get to choose four anima powers, which will empower you in different ways, and needless to say, of course, I picked the Glass Cannon build and actually did a ton of damage. The boss doesn't seem too difficult on heroic difficulty at least, and even though it will not be counted into your logs due to these anima powers, this boss fight is a ton of fun for us. On the other hand, we have the Eye of the Jailer, and I have to be completely honest with myself and with you guys here. This fight on heroic difficulty was very, very boring. You'll hear me say this a couple more times throughout this video actually, but the Eye of the Jailer definitely takes the cake here on heroic difficulty. Either the fight was incredibly undertuned damage wise and way overtuned health wise because it took forever, or this boss is legitimately just boring as hell. In theory, this is a very nice Shadow Priest fight because we can multi dot with Misery here whenever the ads spawn and also get a third tank ad to cleave off of at times. The boss room is insanely large though, which is a downside for a slow moving spec like ours, and depending on your tanks, this will make multi-dotting here quite annoying. The only other thing that was somewhat important was the eye beam that the boss does after the ad died, or rather the ads died, but it's so incredibly easy to play that it does just take the fun out of the entire mechanic. All you do is click on a chain, so on an extra button, and get thrown to the other side of the platform, thus just evading the beam. I'm interested in seeing how this fight is going to be on Mythic, but so far, even though this is a decent fight for Shadow Priest, at least it seems, it seems very underwhelming. Coming up next, we have the Remnant of Nerzul. While playing this fight, I honestly must say I found it cool but kind of boring, but looking back at it, it wasn't really that boring at all. It was actually quite a decent fight. The orbs need to be damaged and then moved out of the raid, giving a Shadow Priest constant adds to funnel damage from. It seems as if you'll be focusing one orb once it needs to be pushed low, while just cleaving the other and mostly sticking to single target boss damage. Mechanically, this is another boss with comparatively little to do though, which in this case isn't a bad thing because it lets us focus entirely on something I feel we've been missing throughout Castle Nathria, and that is multi-dotting and cleave damage management. The Remnants of Nerzul, or Remnant of Nerzul, definitely offers this and is actually quite fun, and whether or not this boss will get a boatload of new mechanics in Mythic, well, of course, that remains to be seen. Next up, we definitely have one of the cooler fights of the Sanctum, namely Soul Render Dormazane, who also lets us see a familiar face again during the encounter. 
Solar Vendor Dormer's Day definitely seems like a misery fight, as there are frequent ad spawns and waves of 4 or 5, along with the boss being constantly up. All ads need to be debuffed in order to receive more damage, making misery even more plausible in order to deal ads, or rather deal damage to the ads, and all of the debuffs, or rather the debuff ads as well. I definitely felt that our dots had been buffed, and personally I feel, or actually felt, as if going for a Void Torrent and Talbotar's build here, along with Misery, was a stronger option in focus damage on these adds, while the Shadow Flame Prism is arguably stronger when it comes to just bombing the adds down. Overall though, we still have to analyze the sims, and even though currently it looks as if the Shadow Flame Prism will remain strong, while Talbotar's will be a very good single target or two target cleave choice, I definitely feel as if Talbotar's and Void Torrent are much better for many of these fights, you'll see this in most of my footage, depending on what you have to do. Now from these last three upcoming bosses, I will already assure you that only one was actually any fun, but uh, let's take it one step at a time, we'll get to that. Let's actually start off with both boring ones. First off, we have the Guardian of the First Ones, and on Heroic Difficulty, this is a raw single target fight, and I'd say that this is the DPS check before the last three bosses, similar to Sludge Fist in Castle Nathria. At the time of testing, Shadow Priest was not nerfed yet, and so our single target damage was still very high. Whether or not we'd still be this strong on this fight once the Sanctum of Domination opens, that remains to be seen or it will have to be tested again, but overall this fight is incredibly one-dimensional for us so far. Simply stand within one of the three pillars, move out with the debuff, and move back in. Dodge the little beams on the ground and rinse and repeat basically whenever he breaks the pillar that you are in. We didn't get too far with testing here, as this boss did feel quite overtuned, but this fight is unengaging nonetheless. And this brings us to a fight where opinions may certainly differ, but this is another fight that is incredibly boring in my opinion, and also a little bit strange in terms of the damage patterns, and that is Fate Scribe Roka Low. This, in theory, could be a searing nightmare fight, as a ton of adds spawn during each intermission, and as you can see by the damage done, this fight is wonderful for Shadow Priest as we can just spam Searing Nightmare, due to so many adds being up that it, it's, it can essentially just be spammed with a little downtime. Now, what makes this fight strange is its damage pattern, or rather in its damage pattern, is the drastic cut once the intermission is over and we're back in the normal phase. Not a single ad spawns here from a tank, well apart from a tank ad, here and there, and all we really do is tunnel down the boss, which directly counters even taking Searing Nightmare, as we'll most likely want to make use of our single target strength, forcing us to potentially take Twist of Fate. Whether or not you think the idea and mechanic behind pushing these runes into their recording slot is cool or not, I, I will leave that up to you entirely, but for me personally, I honestly it just didn't cut it. It certainly looks cool, but the mechanic behind it is a little underwhelming. Similar to the dance at the Council of Blood. The idea is very cool and it looks nice, but the actual gameplay of the dance, similar to pushing the runes on this boss, is incredibly underwhelming. I can definitely see this boss being fun for many though, but I'm not sure for how many weeks it's going to be fun either spamming Searing Nightmare to nuke these adds, or playing single target focused while everyone else tops you on damage. This will finally bring us to the last boss that I've tested, which was Kel'Thuzad. Now Kel'Thuzad has the potential to be a very fun boss on Heroic, and most likely so on Mythic as well. The boss is split into multiple phases, and my intuition and playtesting tells me that this is probably a misery fight unless we have to pump damage within his phylactery, in which case we may see this being a twist of fate fight for us. The Shadow Priest's toolkit actually comes to almost its full potential here, because we can be incredibly flexible here either way. Either use Misery to focus on cleaving the adds in the regular realm, or perhaps even taking Shadow Flame Prism along with that, or going single target with Twist of Fate and Talbotar's Stratagem, and solely focus on boss damage as well as damage to Kel'Thuzad in his phylactery. I'm pretty sure this boss fight will be much more fun than the penultimate boss in Castle Nathria, which were the Stone Legion Generals, especially for us as Shadow Priests, as, let's be honest, SLG was, or could be, insanely frustrating when playing Shadow. 
Kel'Thuzad in total should be one of the most exciting bosses for us to look forward to and I'm excited to see whether or not I'm right about these things or just entirely wrong in the future. Alright, all in all, I must say that the Sanctum of Domination, even though having a couple of quite boring bosses, seems to have a lot of potential within it. Even though most bosses seem very easy on heroic difficulty, most of these bosses play very well into our cards as Shadow Priests so far, and since I doubt that many mechanical aspects about the fight will still change, we should be looking at pretty strong content patch for the future for the Shadow Priest, even after the recent nerfs and emphasis on dot damage. Be sure to let me know what you think though. Are you excited for the Sanctum of Domination? Were you able to test it yourself, and if so, what's your opinion on it? Be sure to share it with us in the comments of course down below. And as always, a very special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon, as well as all subscribers over on Twitch. You guys are awesome, and thank you everyone so much for watching. Now have a good one my friends, get excited for patch 9.1, and I will see you all in the next one.